this morning. Morning. Uh, yeah, welcome to Gloucester Salvation Army this morning. Just a few bits to say today. Thank you to everybody who's been involved in Christmas so far. Lots of things have been done, especially this week in the, the toy and distribution of toy and food parcels. So a big thank you to everybody who's done everything so far. But we have more to go. Uh, one more week, it's nearly there, but we are, yeah, just a few more things happening this week. On Friday, we have Messy Church here at six o'clock. If you would like to get involved in that or able to come along, have a chat with me today. I will find you something to do. And also, we are looking for collectors for our carol playing in the city centre on Saturday between 9.30 and 1.30. Again, if you can be available to do that, uh, please make yourselves known today. This afternoon at four o'clock will be our carol service, our big core carol service. So again, come along, invite your friends. It'll be good to see this, uh, this place full for tonight. Unfortunately, Major Gareth and both Major Susan are um, struggling with COVID right now. Uh, so we, we send our best wishes to them, wishing them well for a speedy recovery. Um, but this morning we'll be led by Lieutenant James. Welcome. Thank you. Well, folks, you've made it. You're halfway through Advent. I nearly said Lent, but yeah, halfway through Advent. Hopefully this morning, we're just going to take stock of where we've come from and where we're going to go to. Um, as we're going to think about peace. And for some of us, we may have had a lot of peace in our December already. Well, we're going to add to that. Um, others of us may be limited in our experience of space and peace. So hopefully this morning we're going to have time to do that. But first of all, we're going to turn and sing to song 105 in our song book. It says, do you know the song the angels sang on the night long ago when the heavens above with their music rang till, echo, till, the, till it echoed in the earth below? All glory in the highest, peace on earth. We can have peace on earth here today. Goodwill, uh, goodwill to men, glory in the highest. Let's stand and we'll sing these three verses through. Thank you. Take your seats. Andy's going to come and lead us um, as we light our third Advent uh, candle this morning. Thank you. Light shines on the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. 
Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. Why do we light the third Advent candle? The third candle reminds us that Jesus' birth brings joy to all who believe in him. So we join all of creation in celebrating him. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Lord Jesus, help us to celebrate your advent in the humble obedience that was Joseph, in the reverent pondering of the heart that was Mary, with the song of the angels, the rejoicing of the shepherds, and the worship of the wise men. In our Lord's name we pray. Amen. Amen. It was in that place called Bethlehem where the events of Christmas took place in that little place called Bethlehem and how still we see the lie now. Those of you who have had children will know that sometimes they do lie still, um, other times they don't. Far from it. Um, but yet, as we come this morning, whatever is going on in our lives, let's just take time to be still. We're going to use the the carol, O Little Town of Bethlehem, number 118 in our songbook. And as we um, sing these, we'll sing the first two verses, and then there's going to be opportunity for somebody to lead us in prayer as we open our worship this morning. Feel free to pray for um, what has gone on in this week. Um, The fact that you know, 900 and something parcels uh, have been packed this week and, deli- you know, 2,000 boxes has been delivered this week. I mean, that's some feat, isn't it? We're thankful to God, as we spoke about last week, for his provision in that. But also what we face and what we're celebrating too. So there's a couple of points there and other things that are going on in our world, if somebody will lead us in prayer. So let's sing the first two verses. Thank you. <laughs>
and it might even get worse. But we can take joy from the fact that you do care and that like the boy who brought the loaves and the fishes to help feed the 5,000, people can step forward and do their little bit. And you can multiply that little bit into something wonderful. All glory to you, Lord. And as we think of the approach of Christmas, we are in awe that you should offer us your own only son to do so much for us to do everything for us. We can be joyful indeed, Lord, and we bow down in worship and thanks, Lord. Amen. 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 Let's sing these uh, remaining two verses. are going to come and uh, share their um, music this morning. This morning we're going to um, play uh, a very straightforward, oh no, not straightforward, an arrangement um, of the Polish carol, Infant Holy. Um, this arrangement is by Andrew Blythe. <laughs>
Thank you to the band for their contribution this morning. Young people, I wonder whether you'd like to come and give me a hand. We're going to play a simple game. So what I need you to do is line up in a straight line across the front of the platform, if that's OK. This morning we're going to be thinking about people that were too busy to listen. OK. So I thought we'd have a quick game of Chinese whispers. OK, so I'm going to whisp uh, a sentence into Maddie's. Here, and then, oh, or Aiden, whichever one comes first. Um, and then you're going to pass it on, and then we'll see what the message is by the time we get to the very end. Hopefully, it'll be the same. Yeah? So, turn this off for a second. Green tea, yes, we're there. Hey, so let's, we need to ramp this up a little bit. <laughs> don't you love the expression when you don't quite get it, you're like, what? See, this might be our reality with God, isn't it? You're like, what? Yeah? And we take time to listen to God. It's just like, what are you on about? Does it make sense? Okay? <laughs> Whatever you've heard, pass on to Seb. You don't know what you said either. Okay. This is where it all goes to pot, isn't it? Okay. Um, have you got anything that you think you heard? No. Okay, let's try a different one. <laughs> What was that one? We'll try the same one again. Um, Okay, so it was, well, hello, was the, uh, yeah? You can see where it got there. Now, we're not going to do this, but imagine that we tried to pass that message on while the band were playing their beautiful piece of music just now. That would have been even more difficult, wouldn't it? And sometimes there's a lot of noise, and sometimes we're really busy, that sometimes we have to, yeah, put our fingers in our ears and be still. We have to try and block out all the things that we've got to do and be still and listen to God. Like, that's what we're going to think about later this morning, that there's a group of people in the Bible who were so used to being where they were at. They didn't like where they were at, but they got used to it, and they just were doing their thing rather than taking time to listen to God. So thanks for your help this morning. If you'd like to take your seats, thank you. Let's give them a round of applause. The sentence that didn't get across was, uh, time for a blue moon. <laughs> uh, sorry? Oh, okay. No, it's all right. Okay. Uh, we're going to listen to the songs just now. Thank you.
know if you picked up the line in the, the song the songs have just presented to us. Um, oh, hush the noise, ye men of strife, and hear the angels sing. <coughs> when we talk about the peace of God, there are times where we need to put aside the strife or the noise, whatever word we, we want to use there, and listen out to the voice of God. In our Christmas story, God used the, the messengers of the angels, didn't he? You know, we talk about that a lot. Um, but yet, yeah, let us take time to hear about the God who is faithful and wants to provide for us and be with us. We're going to turn to Psalm 300, 378, which says, Lord, I come before your throne of grace. I find rest in your presence and fullness of joy. In worship and wonder, I behold your face. Face singing, what a faithful God have I. May that be our testimony this morning that we come to worship a God who is faithful and our testimony is we say he's faithful because and then you can fill in the gap there for yourselves. Um, shall we stand and we'll sing these verses through? Thanks very much. <coughs> Please take your seats. This morning we're going to do things a little bit differently. Uh, we're going to look at our Bible reading and uh, I've got a few thoughts that I'm going to share. Um, so no more than about 10 minutes. Some of you may be pleased um, for that. But then there's going to be time for, for, for peace. And we're just going to sit. Now, I did think we could sit for 10 minutes in silence, and I did, that was just, yeah. Some of us would enjoy that, others of us would be like, ugh. So there's going to be some music videos that are going to appear on the screen. Because actually, if we're going to talk about finding peace and spending time with God, then let's give ourselves time to do that. Let's not just talk about it, let's do it. And so there'll be um, a number of minutes where we can, probably about 10 minutes or so, where we can do that. And at the back of the hall, there's songbooks and Bibles if they would be of help to you during that time. 
Um, there's also a couple of uh, copies of the Advent reading book, if, again, that would be helpful to you. Um, but to just use this time, and that, my comment at the beginning, of, well done, you've got halfway through um, Advent, isn't a flippant comment. It's the reality that let's just take stock of where we've come from and where we're going to as we journey in this last week towards Christmas, in this time of waiting. So that's the plan this morning, and I hope it will be helpful to us in our worship. So first of all, we're going to turn to Isaiah chapter 48. Isaiah chapter 48, starting at verse 16. From the first announcement, I have not spoken in secret. At the time it happens, I am there. And now the Sovereign Lord has sent me, endowed me with his spirit. This is what the Lord says. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the ways that you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would be like a river, your well-being like waves of the sea. Your descendants would have not been like your descendants would have been like the sand, your children like the numberless grains. Their names would have never been blotted out, nor destroyed before me. Leave Babylon, flee the Babylonians, announce this with shouts of joy, and proclaim it. Send it out to send it out to the earth of the earth. Say to the Lord, has redeemed his servant Jacob. This did not thirst when he led them through the desert. Sorry, they did not thirst when he led them through the desert. He made water flow for them from the rock. He split the rock and the water gashed out. No peace, says the Lord, for the wicked. I was struck by these verses as I read them in the week. Um, I forget which day they appeared on our daily reading plan. Um, Wednesday, I think. Um, But the, the day, yeah, Wednesday, entitled Peace Like a River... These opening comments of how often, how often do we take time to listen to God? Sometimes more than others, if I'm honest with you this morning. Probably when I'm less busy, I take more time. I'm sure your um, families are are the same as mine, Um, family and friends are the same. But when somebody's expecting a child, um, you kind of you get near the due date, and you kind of your ears are perked up, aren't they, to any message that comes from that side of the family or that that direction from most people? A kind of like, is it now? Kind of thing. And um, our senses are heightened, and we know what we kind of expect. And so every time we're scrolling through social media, the, the phone pings, whatever it may be, in the multitude of ways that we can now connect with each other. We're waiting. And maybe we then spring into action by visiting the said family, um, new family member, or we spring into those practical things of providing meals uh, for the, the new parents and all those kind of practical things and making sure that they have all they need. But how often do we take the time and have our senses heightened to hearing the voice of God? As I say, here we are in the middle of Advent, where we are journeying towards the crib side. And we know the date of the birth. It will come to no surprise to us on the 25th of December, the day that we choose to celebrate the birth of Jesus. So there's not really that waiting in anticipation in the same way of the unknown date, is there? But actually, let us not lose any of the anticipation and excitement. You know, there's a saying that it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Well, for us as Christians, it is both the journey and the destination, isn't it? For us as disciples of Jesus, but also our eternal um, home. The verses that we read from Isaiah, uh, the Jewish, the Jews have become quite comfortable and complacent in their captivity and didn't want to leave. They'd followed uh, the counsel of Jeremiah. They'd had houses and gardens and families. They'd become quite settled in their 
place of captivity. How often do we find ourselves in a situation that we don't particularly like, but actually it's more comfortable than the unknown? That's what we're dealing with here. And they got so used to going through the day-to-day, and they got quite settled, that actually, you know, if this is my lot, we can bear it. But actually God wanted more for them. And was calling them out of that. But indeed they were busy doing their everyday life, not taking stock to listen. Nevertheless, that the Holy Land where they belonged was where God had work for them to do. God told them that they were that they were to be uh, sincere in using his name, identifying with his city and, uh, and obeying his will. But, you know, like most people, and I'm sure we all have this streak, we can all be a little bit stubborn at times, um, and they didn't want to respond. They weren't excited about what God was calling them to do. But yet God wanted them to move. Had they obeyed and fled in the first place, they would have experienced the peace without war. But it was a little bit too late. God had put them in this situation to refine them, to prepare them for future work. I'm sure there have all been times when we've gone through situations, maybe even challenging times, where we think, well, what's the point of this? But actually, as we kind of look back, Hindsight's a wonderful thing at times, as they say, isn't it? We can see how God has taken bits of our character and moulded it into better, or refined us into the people that he's creating us to be. But that takes time, doesn't it? That takes listening before coming before God. None of our experiences are wasted to God. He promises us that he would go before us. He go, promises that he would go before the Jews and prepare the way like he does for each of us. A number of years ago, I spent time as part of a prison chaplaincy team. And I'm going to tell you a story about a guy called Bob, not his real name. But Bob had been in the, um, the prison system for a number of years. For whatever reason, he was there. And he found comfort within the prison system. Meals were at a set time. There was a a daily routine that he enjoyed. There was security in that. I came across uh, Bob when he was in North Sea Camp, which is a a prison just, uh, a Cap C, sorry, Cap D prison, which is an open prison on the outskirts of Boston. So it's a rehabilitation prison um, where people have been in prison for a long time about rehabilitating them into society. Bob didn't want to be a part of the society today because it was so different from the one that he left so many years previously. So he would get to the point where um, he was eligible for day release. So he would be granted day release and he would do that. The bus would leave the prison and they would go to their designated drop-off point and Bob would get off the bus and go into the town, do his business, and then be half an hour late back for the bus. Now, the repercussions of that is that you can't be late back for the bus because that's not the agreement. The repercussions of that is that you then get get thrown back into the system, back to Cat C, which um, for them is Lincoln, a lovely Victorian grotty prison, um, for them to be in but actually found comfort in that because it was a system of which he knew. Now that's probably a bit of an extreme um, illustration for us this morning, but yet that's where the people are at that we read in Isaiah. I don't know what's happened to Bob um, since I no longer go into, uh, into prison, but yet let's not be happy with our lot but actually what is God wanting us to experience the fullness of his love and who he's creating us to be you know it's easy for us um, both 
individually and collectively as the Gloucester core to grow complacent of what is comfortable around us. God may be wanting to speak to us individually and as a core family to lead us forward, but yet do we make time to listen? We are to be here, we are to be servants for God, not consumers or spectators. This morning, as I said, we're going to take some time to listen and reflect. As I say, there's Bibles and songbooks and uh, Advent reading books on the, the back shelf as you come in. And if they will be useful for you this morning, then take the time. Or just take time just to listen to the music that we're going to listen to. The music of It Is Well With My Soul. Followed by a recording of our songsters singing Bow The Knee. As we take time to be still and come before God. So let's just use this time however you want. If you want to use the mercy seat, come and use that. If you want to speak to somebody, um, speak with them. If you want to pray with one another, do that too. But let's just take time in the middle of this season just to commune with God one-on-one -on -one together. Thank you.
wonder if we can turn to the song that says, To be in your presence, to sit at your feet, this is my desire, O Lord. And there's a line in that song that says, Not rushing away. And actually, if we to spend time in his presence. The words come on the screen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To sit at your feet, where your love surrounds me and makes me complete. This is my desire, is that our desire this morning? Let's sing this song, thank you. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the peace of which comes from you. May our prayer be that we rest in your presence. We take time to listen. We take time to be led. Even in the, the busyness of life. Lord, there are times where we, it's far easier to come out time and make time for that to be in your presence to be intentionally giving you space and our ears are open but Lord when the diary becomes full sometimes you're the first thing that gets pushed out and we can be so busy serving you by serving others that we don't take the time to rest and to receive your peace So, Father, we thank you for this time of waiting, this time of Advent. Lord, as we journey towards the birth of, of your son, Jesus, let us do that joyfully, but also peacefully. Let us not be become so well adjusted to our everyday lives that we don't look out for where you're at work, where you're leading us to. Well, we just pray for each of us as individuals and collectively. Well, we thank you that you show an interest in each of us. As we read in the Psalms that you know how many hairs are on our head. That's the level of interest you take 
and delight in us. Whatever our, our journey has been, whether it's been one that has been responding to you constantly or whether we've taken those moments where we've enjoyed the surroundings, even though we've sensed you moving us on, but we wish to stay where we're at. And we thank you for your patience in that. And Lord, for those this morning who perhaps are feeling the, the turmoils of life, may they know the peace that comes from you. And may they say, it is well with my soul. Father, we place before you the rest of today and all that it will hold for us. For, for those of us who will be um, involved in the carol concert later this afternoon, whether that's participating and leading or whether we're going to be here um, as part of the congregation. Lord, may, may we experience your peace amongst all the joy that we will experience this, this afternoon. And may that joy and peace be passed on to those of which will come and worship with us this afternoon. And they too won't stay in the place of which they are at the moment, but yet will hear your voice leading them up forward. So Lord, bless us. Be close to us. Be near us, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay. Close by us forever and love us, we pray. Bless all your dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. Amen. 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 We're going to uh, close our, our worship this morning by singing song 113. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare a room and heaven and nature sing. Let's, uh, let's stand and we'll sing these verses through. May the blessing of joy abide within you. May the blessing of peace rest upon you. May the blessing of love flow out of you. May the blessing of the Lord be ours this Christmas time, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.